Today we're gonna do a lemon. Really excited about the lemon. I've got my paints here. I will turn the screen so that you can see what I have down here. Uh, here are the my watercolors, paper, brush. I've got two things of uh, water, a dirty one and a clean one. And I always have a uh, paper towel so that I can either dry the brush off a little bit with the paper towel. Today we're going to do a, a lemon. So I hope you guys have your paints and your uh, watercolors ready to go. I love to, just to show you my little setup, My I put my tea on this side over here because I always dip, and I think you guys do it too, dip my brush <laughs> into the tea. So I have the waters on this side, and I put my tea over this side. I've got the paper here my watercolors here i love to just get them uh, put a little drop of water in each color to get them primed and ready to paint with it makes them nice and juicy and not dry and frustrating um, that's the best thing about watercolor is you can keep the paint stays in this tray and it'll dry and then all you have to do is reconstitute it again to get to make it uh, usable again so it's nice acrylic dries out and you end up having to throw it away and that's frustrating. So I hope you guys have your book and you have your paints and you have your brushes. I'm gonna use, this is a 12. I think I'd like to go a little smaller, probably because my uh, the book is small. Um, if I were in a bigger book, I'd like to paint really big. So I use bigger brushes. Do you guys do that too? Give me a thumbs up if, if you have your stuff and you're ready to go. Um, I think and you're getting, this is good, okay. so. We're gonna do a lemon today. And first, just by drawing a little bit of drawing, a really light sketch. Uh, the lemon is kind of an oval shape. I'm lightly sketching it. It doesn't have to be perfect. What I like about this is you don't get hung up on the drawing of, of your lemon. There's that little nodule on the top of the lemon. And then here's one on the bottom. Just kind of sketch it out a little and I today we're gonna to put a leaf in I wanted to work on the on the leaf and a little bit of the color so also we know the light is gonna be here so if there's a little bit of shadowing it'll be down here hi Rex how are you happy that you're here today I hope you have your paints and your brushes and you're ready to go uh, we just drew a lemon we're gonna do a lemon today maybe I can review just to give you a little heads up we did a pear last yes uh, Tuesday and we used salt on the pear and then I did ask that you post to art yourself studio or art yourself studio creators there's two groups you can do the first day we did a watermelon and that was kind of a wash on wet so the book is getting bigger we're getting some things in here it's kind of exciting um, so I drew the lemon and I'd like to always put a little color key on, on the, my paintings, especially because this is gonna be like my dictionary. When I wanna go back to paint uh, a lemon again, you'll have this dictionary. This is a multi-purpose paper. It's not watercolor paper, but it, it's a better price for when you're practicing. But I would love to have this because then I will have this dictionary if I ever wanna paint a lemon, I can look back and look at this and say oh yeah those are the colors i used uh, i usually always have a pencil sharpener if you need a pencil sharpen your pencils kind of have everything ready your glass your cup of coffee or your tea two things of water one for dirty one for clean paper towel um sometimes i'll write the yellow the color down this one we're going to use cadmium yellow so i'm going to write that down cadmium yellow and cadmium yellow is just a warmer yellow. It has a little bit of uh, orange in it, so it, it's a warm yellow. And then the other green we're gonna use is the, it's a yellow green. Um, but if it calls for a sap, you would just add a little bit of blue to it and it can, it, it'll turn a little bit of sappy. So we just drew, just draw an oval. It doesn't have to be perfect. The sun is coming from here. We're gonna put a leaf in these little nodules. They also get treated with the sun highlight 
in here, let's say we're gonna put a little highlight down here like this, and then the dark side will be here and the shadow will be here. So this is where I'm gonna paint. And I'll start with the, um, I'll start with a little bit of that cadmium yellow. And I'm just gonna do a really light wash. Watercolor is all about layers, and a lot of people get uh, frustrated. We were talking in my uh, watercolor class. I have an advanced one, uh, session three at 10 in the morning, and then I just had one at one for my session two. We did pansies. They were a little tricky today, weren't they, Heather? <laughs> Any case, um, so the, the thing with, we were talking about that in watercolor, we were talking about how it's kind of frustrating because you know in your mind what you want the final one to look like, but with watercolor, you really have to be patient and let the one, one side dry before you paint again on top of it. So it's a lot of about being patient. I usually um, have two things going at one time. If I'm doing like a puppy portrait, I'm gonna soap up this little bit here with the paper towel because I do wanna leave some of that white. That's where the, the sun is, the, my highlight is over here. So that's gonna be highlighted there. Um, but anyway, I'd like to do like two portraits at the same time because then I can let one dry and I work on the other a little bit and then I'll come back to the one that's dry. So this is almost dry. So now I'm gonna come back and do another layer of this uh, cadmium yellow. Some artists really like to, to take that pencil line away and some leave it. I'm not gonna worry about it today. I probably would have erased it, but it's, it's not gonna bother me today. I'm not gonna let, <laughs> let it bother me. All right, so there we go. We've got even a little more deeper. I might, uh, I love that we're keeping some of that white there. Um, I might wipe off just a little bit over here. So you saw me put on the layer and then I'm taking a little bit off up there. I'm keeping it down here because I like that it's gonna give it some roundness, give it some edge. Because on the side of a, a lemon, you will see an edge that's gonna be a little darker. And I have a nice picture. I don't know if you guys were ready, if, if uh, last week I, or Tuesday I said, get a bring a lemon to the table if you have a lemon. Well, I did bring a picture of a lemon. And here's a good example of how it's darker down here. There's the little nodule there and there's a little nodule up there. And then you see a really good highlight. And see that bumpy bumpiness? If we really wanted to be um, detailed, we would definitely take our paper towel. The paper towel is what gives it a lot of texture. The tissue and the toilet paper will soak up some of it and won't leave much texture. But this paper towel will give it a lot of texture. So if I wanted to have some texture there, I would just pull it up. So there's two layers, it's called transparency. And I'm going to put now a little more down and see how much darker I can get the edge. But I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I, I, I wanna keep that to start becoming more round. And underneath the leaf is gonna be a little more shadowed. Okay. So while that's drying, I will start with a nice light layer of the green for the leaf. I'm just gonna lightly put it on and I just needed that little bit. And then I'm gonna pull it out here. See how fun that is? It just pulls out. So what's happening here is I, uh, the yellow wasn't dry. So the green is, is bleeding into the yellow. Sometimes I like that, especially if it was bleeding into the yellow up here. I think that would have looked really good because, you know, it's kind of coming from, the stem is coming from it. But for right now, I'm probably just gonna soak it up a little bit with this paper towel. See that texture you get in there and let that dry a little. That's a good example of how you need to let it dry in between. Then again, look at now, I just pulled some of that yellow into the leaf and I really like that. I think that's really pretty. Um, it's It's, watercolor it's yours have fun you can do what you want with it uh, it's a little more dry so i'm going to take some of that green we talked about this green down here i'm going to take some of that green i'm going to make a little pile here to show you and i'll mix some of the yellow in there you can drag it out you can pull it out a little bit and let's add that as a shading in this lemon 
little bit of shading here. I do want some more under here because that's the, gonna be the shadow from the leaf. And hopefully it'll dry fast enough. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Lemons are fun to paint. I think they're just fun. They're pretty, the colors are pretty. They've got a lot of texture in there. I just think they're fun. I, I like them. Yeah, I love that. Oh, those lemons are beautiful. Love that, guys. Um, please be sure to post your pictures. If you're painting with me, I'd love to see it. That's the only thing about this Facebook Live is I don't get to see what you're doing. So if you're painting with me, or your kids are, please post it in the Art Yourself studio so I can see you. Here we go with that bleeding again. I'm gonna pick it up, no problem. Let's say that green leaf, if I wanted to, um, it's still a little wet. If I wanted it to make it uh, darker, you could add just a dab of indigo blue. Makes it rich. We don't add black necessarily. I don't care to add black when I want to make um, like a shadow or something. So you can use a little bit of the blue. There it goes bleeding again. It's just because my paper's not um, dry. I was going to demo or show you. Got that board here somewhere. Sometimes we'll, you'll find uh, maybe a cardboard or this is a pressed board. If you have your postcards ready, you can tape your postcards down to the car, to the board, and then when you paint, it'll absorb, and it, you won't get the bumpiness that I'm getting here. So for your postcard that you're gonna send somebody, do it in watercolor and do paste it down. The trick to pulling it up, let's see if I can do this. The trick to pulling it up is if it's completely dry. So you paint this now, and then when it's completely dry, you just pull it off, but you pull it off carefully to the side like this, really slow. If you pull it off carefully to the side and really slow, it will, it will not rip the paper. If you pull it off fast, it will rip the paper. So we don't, we don't really want you to rip your paper. So you can tape it down. I'm sure you guys probably have some of this blue tape at home. Tape it down, and then when you're finished, when it's completely dry, you can tear off that paper, and then on the back side, write your um, address, write who you're gonna send it to, and mail it away, they'll love it. Here's a little sample of one that I did the other day. So here and on the back, I would just write the address that I wanna send it to here. I'd write my little note here. You put your stamp here, and then write your little note, and then be sure to write who it's by. Definitely need to send some postcards these days. People need mail. Let's see, did that dry up a little bit? Just a little bit. Okay, let's pull that out a little. The way you can tell that your um, paper is dry, let's say I say, oh, I wanna wait till it's dry before I paint more, you feel underneath. And if it's cold, it's not dry yet. So most likely this is still, still a little bit chilly. My paper towel picked up a lot of the color there. I can see when I'm looking at the camera, I can really see the difference in the color, but uh, I'm gonna just pull it out a little bit. Just pull that out from down here. There's a little pile there, which is so fun. Watercolor is so fun because you can just move it and manipulate it really good. If it really well, excuse me. If this were 100% dry and I took a wet brush to it, if I rubbed against it, it definitely would pick up the color. And I think sometimes people get frustrated with that too. So you can play and work with it while it's wet, but then once it's dry, just stop, leave it alone. I'm adding a little bit of this yellow ochre for under here because that green is a little overpowering right now. So I'm gonna just add that to show a little bit of the shading. Um, remember for shallow, shadow, uh, use blue or use a green or a purple. I'm just gonna put a little shading under here. Uh, I'm not using black. I think a lot of times you think, oh, I should have a black, but the blue is so uh, interesting and it kind of gives it a little more, I don't know, interest. Black is just, you think it would be black because you think shadows are black and gray, but look how pretty this blue looks. And it's just, it's a nice compliment to the, the yellow in the, in the lemon. Yep. Yeah. 
so that's going to be my shadow the light is over here you can see there's light on there that green is almost dry i'm going to add a little blue to it like we did down here to the green to make it a little richer and maybe add a little detail just let it bleed it's fun just let it do its thing and there you go how simple was that the, the lemon is really fun do you see the texture do you see how round it is do you see some roundness <laughs> maybe you can kind of help it with the brush a little bit this way but i love how this is bleeding see how it's kind of bleeding in that's really exciting this little nodule probably needs a little separation and it's nice to have some relaxing music or your favorite music playing when you're when you're studying if you're painting with me be sure to post it look at i didn't even dip in my coffee today how nice there's a lemon the highlight is on the middle on this one i put the highlight over there it's a little stark now that i'm looking at it and i'm looking at the lemon that highlight is a little bit bright so with my just my that's dirty water and i'm going to the clean water and here's the sample there too I think I can put that down. No, nope, can't see it. Okay. Um, I'm going to just, with that clean water, push that yellow just a little bit around. I still want it to be light, but I don't, it, it shouldn't be white, white. Uh, maybe a little piece of it. But like when I do the puppy portraits, when I do their eyes, I like to do just a little splash of white because I feel like that's the light that the the light that's shining, you know, from the light in the room or whatever on the on the eye but for here sometimes when it's on the watercolor on your paper it's just a little bit too stark to leave that there there we go what do you guys think that was kind of fast now i'm looking at the time what time is it <laughs> i don't i don't think that took very long at all it's 3 16. i was hoping that we'd have a full half hour of painting is there anything you guys want to do or you want to see um i didn't really have a plan for next time tuesday it's going to be easter You'll have Easter weekend. Um, we did the pear. How about a kiwi? How about if we paint the kiwi? We'll do a kiwi next. One thing on your paper, make sure you date it. And let's see today's date, which I know, but um, it's four. I did it to my last paper. What time? What day is it today, you guys? Anybody know? April, where are we? I just can't even believe I can't. April 9th? Is it the 7th, 8th, 9th? It's the 9th. Okay. 4, 9, 20. There you go. You can tell this is impromptu because how do I not know the date? Okay. How's that for a lemon? Do we like that? Look at what a nice little card it makes. Take your watercolor paper, cut it in fours, and then just paint one on a watercolor paper and send it off to somebody somebody who needs to hear from you. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> April 9th. Thank you. Um, I definitely drew a blank on that one. <laughs> this live stuff is kind of fun. It's new for me. I wish I could see you. I'm so much easier talking to people. Um, it does help to look at your painting. Sometimes when you are painting and you're not sure how it looks, there is um, this little uh, it's like a red card. It, it kind of takes out color. And if you put it up to your eye and put it over your painting, you can see, okay, that might be too close, but you can see where your color needs some variety. You need some light and you need some dark. There, it works better with the green on this particular color. But do you see where there's a nice shading, there's a nice circle, the leaf looks like it's showing. It's It's got a nice uh, light, medium, and dark. So when you're doing watercolor, you need, you definitely need the three values, the light, medium, and dark. Um, if you don't have one of these cool little gizmos, which is on my website, all my materials are listed on the website um, under classes and then under materials used. For every class that I teach here in the studio, I, I list the materials because sometimes I'm using something you might want to see what it is. Um, I put it all in there. 
Um, but if you don't have that handy dandy little uh, red paper or the green, you can take a picture of your project. You take a picture of it and you can put it in black and white mode and that would, that would help. Or you can, um, sometimes I like to take a picture of it and then reverse it, like flip it so that it kind of puts you automatically into the other side of your brain. And then that kind of helps you to see actually what you're painting. Because when you're looking straight at it, you kind of know what it's supposed to look like and you know what it is. But when you're painting it, it's just a little bit, um, yeah, it's kind of nice to get it out of your, what you know, and into your other side of the brain. I think it's, somebody told me once, I thought it was kind of cute. It's like when you're driving in the car and you are just going along, tooling along, kids are in the back screaming, jumping around, having fun. You're kind of in associative mode. You're just associating. You know what you're doing. You're just driving because you're comfortable. But then when you, um, then when it starts raining and it pours down rain, then you get in cognitive mode and you're like yelling at the kids, okay, you guys be quiet. I need to concentrate. I've got to see what I'm doing. You're in cognitive mode. So, what, what we'd like you to do is just get to the other side of the brain, get out of your conscious, get out of what you know, and just see the colors move and flow. Kind of relax, kind of associate what you're comfortable with. Don't need to, to recognize or concentrate. Um, yeah, there's our little lemon. That was, I'm sorry, I didn't really realize it would be that quick. And I, I say it's easy, it might not be easy for you, and that's okay. Don't, don't uh, hesitate to watch this again, play, practice. Don't be frustrated, please don't be frustrated if it's not easy, it's, it's not supposed to be. I, 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 um, I don't wanna downplay that too much. I think I'm gonna put a little stem in here. I'm kind of having fun, I wanna add a little, little stem that's gonna come outside of that tip. I love how the watercolor bleeds in. Love how this watercolor bleeds. It's really fun. Yeah, we're gonna do a kiwi next week, which will have skin on it, which would be kind of fun, the fuzziness. Yet last Tuesday we did the the pear and then the first one, and I did write down Art Yourself Studio Creators if you wanna add your picture that you're painting today so I get to see you. I would love that. I, I wish I could see you right now. Um, and then our first day was this watermelon. And to be honest, I think if I wanted to, you could always go back when it's dry. Uh, I would go back and maybe outline, and I'm using a black and a little purple mix, but I might outline these seeds to make them a little more prominent. Hopefully you're, you've been doing this along with me, so you'll have your little book too. And if you wanted to, you could go back and see, I'm just kind of um, filling it in. I'm not putting a lot of water and scooping it up because I don't want to pick up the water. I don't want to pick up the color. I'm just trying to add. Can you see that little bit of bleed there from the red that was on the first one? Oh, I love that. That was, I love that bleeding. That's, that's why people just fall in love with watercolor. A lot of people think it's really hard and are afraid to do it uh, because I think you're used to doing something and seeing it and painting it exactly as is. But with watercolor, you just need to be a little more patient, kind of visualize it, take your time, let it dry in between, and then you can do your uh, uh, more defined details after. Like, like right now, see, for example, this we did last week when I first put the seeds in, they bled because my paper wasn't dry. But now I can go through and just do a little more f refining and putting a little more detail in. Um, it's fun. Then you can get your detail and it's not so scary. We lost, totally lost that rind. There we go. Might add that rind in there. This was a wet on wet technique. That was wet on wet. This was wet on dry. This one was salt. I try to write down like some details and I try to write down the date. I don't think I wrote, oh yeah, I did write salt here. So I did a light wash, we did layers, and then we did salt. And there's our lemon. We did a little drawing. And then we did the, we did, uh, actually we did layers. We did a layer, layer technique. And we talked about um, definition. And we talked about shading. 
So please let me know if you did it. Let me know. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you. I love what you guys have to say. Thank you. I am able to read it today because I videoed my, I've got my camera up and I videoed the, the um, computer. So I can see you. I can see you're here. Thank you so much for being here today. We're going to do a Kiwi on um, Tuesday. In the meantime, have a great Easter. If you need some kits for uh, gifts, give me a call. I'll put them out on my outside porch. I've got uh, bags of bunnies and little silk projects and glass fusion projects. So if you would like a, a project for the Easter weekend, let me know. I, I can put it outside. It's called curbside pickup. Um, I'm, I'm definitely practicing not um, social distance and I think I would respect you all to do the same. So if you want some kits or any artwork that you want to do, please let me know. I'm happy to. Uh, it, it's definitely on my website, artyourselfstudio.com. You can look on there and see the different kits. I'm also doing some online classes. If you guys are interested in online classes, you can um, pick the class you like. And then you, like if it's the resin, beach resin class, you would um, get the resin ahead of time. I'll put a kit together. You'd get a resin, the resin and the materials for the class, the shells and the mini um, canvas. And you would uh, pick up the kit ahead of time and then we would do it together. I would give you the Zoom link and then we would paint it and work on it together. I'm gonna show you it. I think you'll like it. It's really cool. I really had fun with this one. My friend Leanne, Leanne is the one that showed me this, this one. And I really thought it was fun. There's one. It's really cool. It's resin, and they're like mini canvases. So that you can see the resin pours down. Here's one, and then here's the other. What do you guys think? You see how you do the green, and, or the blue for the water, and then the sand, and then I have little shells. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. So let me know if there's something I can do for you. I appreciate you coming today. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and again, we're gonna do the kiwi, which has like the furry outside and then the nice pretty green inside. Um, okay guys, Mwah. thank you. Again, DM me or send the picture, show me what you painted. I'd love to see it. Have a great weekend and I'll see you Tuesday.